Welcome back to the American Health Surgeon's Bulletin Brief from the front lines, Surgeon's Voices. And with me today is the voice of a master educator, master clinician, and very dear friend, Dr. Scott Levin, who was recently elected chair of the Board of Regents of the American College of Surgeons. Congratulations to my dear friend, Scott. Thank you, Steve. It's a true honor to be serving alongside you. We'll, we'll have a great partnership this, this year coming forward. Um, more importantly, we both know the hard work that my predecessor, Beth Sutton, put in, and I want to recognize her. Uh, furthermore, um, in the capacity we both serve, we engage our governors and all the members, our wonderful staff under the direction of David Hoyt, and certainly the input from all of our members are, are critical to our future success. Absolutely true. Uh, we're privileged and honored to represent all of those people and, and to collaborate with them. And you also uh, set a precedent with the work you did as, as vice chair, and I'm going to have a hard job filling your shoes, but I'm certainly going to try my best and, and look forward to working side by side, as you said yesterday, joined at the hip for the next year. Um, and towards that end, yes, with pleasure, towards that end, Perhaps you could outline for us uh, some of your goals for the year. Sure, I'd be happy to do this. And as I said, we, I count on the entire college, our staff, our executive director, your expertise in so many our areas as an internationally respected educator and leader and surgeon yourself. Wayne Murdoch has set a very appropriate and important goal to look at the issue of racism in the American College of Surgeons both in Chicago, in Washington, our members, and in American surgery. Crediting David Hoyt and our past presidents, we have a broad reach in American surgery. And all of our pillars, whether it's education, advocacy, member services, um, uh, our quality programs, have to look at this issue critically. And, and, and Wayne, Dr. Wayne Murdoch, our president this year, has outlined a tremendous plan that I think the regents are behind, I know the regions are behind and will get behind spe specific initiatives to drive this further. We have often spoken of the House of Surgery and following the COVID pandemic, the intensity of it, and then in some areas of the country, as we know, perhaps some resurgence, the lessons learned during COVID, the redefinition of the college as the leader for all surgical specialties is very, very important. And we've had private and even open dialogues with many of our surgical colleagues around the country during COVID. The college has led, sharing best practice. We've learned from each other. We've tried to translate that information to sister societies uh, and other organizations. And so bringing the house of surgery together even more uh, is a priority. I just want to recognize Dave Hoyt as we all do for the exemplary and superb leadership over the last eight or nine months. He has lived in the college to be a leader for all of us. And I just want to acknowledge Dr. Hoyt's impeccable leadership uh, as, as we go forward. Well, I certainly echo those sentiments. It's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to watch him in action, to, to learn from him. And as you say, he has really been full-time I think physically in the college building since March, right. uh, keeping the rest of us all going, which, which is an amazing feat. Um, you, you've mentioned some other groups, you've mentioned the pillars and, and the governors and, and other regents and, and the fact of the college being the house of surgery. As a specialist yourself, fully trained and, and board certified in, in both orthopedic surgery and plastic surgery, as well as then uh, tertiary hand surgery and, and, and practicing as one of the most internationally acclaimed uh, subspecialty surgeons, you represent a variety of groups which are not general surgeons. Um, how do you see the college as having reacted with those other non-general surgery surgery specialty groups during COVID, and, and how do you see us going forward? Well, it's a great question. Let me remind you, I did in uh, my prerequisite years, two years of general and thoracic surgery with uh, Dr. Savaston, who was president of the college. And there was my foundation, Steve, not only in, in general surgery principles, but American surgery. We're all on the same team. Uh, the answer to your question directly is we have, as you know, incredibly talented regents 
and our regions during COVID were uh, acting as our ambassadors, uh, our uh, uh, shuttle clock, shuttlecock diplomacy back and forth between their specialties and the college, sharing best practice, whether it was Jim Denany for otolaryngology, head and neck, sharing you know intubation practices and management of the airways. You handled uh, a lot of issues related to COVID manifestations and, and endoscopy uh, and colonoscopy, I may remind you. And so I think each specialty now is looking at the college differently uh, as a leader, as a convener. And we both have relationships with our specialty regents where the principal of the house of surgery and what can we do going forward? Uh, take the CMS cuts, for example, take the profile of American surgery. All of us are special specialists with the Brunswick group. There's so much we can do together. And I'm really excited now. COVID was a catalyst. It was a catalyst. You know, uh, one of the professors of hand surgery, Bill Burkhalter, who was a Vietnam veteran said, we can choose to look at this as the worst of times or the best of times. And I choose to look at it as the best of times. And I'm gonna paraphrase and say, with you by my side, with the talent of the regents, with the principles and the standards of the College of Surgeons, these are going to be the best of times in American surgery. Not, not saying they're not gonna be challenging, not saying that you and I and our fellows have lots of mountains to climb, but I am, I am very optimistic about the talent we have, the commitment we have, and the momentum and the direction in many areas that are going to benefit all of our members, both here in the United States and around the world. Well, the word benefit definitely resonates because we're all going to benefit from your leadership, and I'm, and I'm delighted to be your, your Siamese twin for the next year. You have more hair than I do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just, but most of it is white or gray. Um, any event, um, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to work side by side with you. I, I thank you for your insights and your reflections. Um, any last words on, on how the fellows, and particularly the young fellows, the associate members, the residents can engage with the college, particularly during this next year? Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, communication is the key not only through what we communicate out, but I think you and I are leaders, Steve, like David Hoyt, uh, where my email is known. Uh, I'll even put my phone number out there in a bulletin brief. That's how strongly I feel about access to me as chair of the Board of Regents. Uh, I'll do my best to respond to our colleagues and our constituents. And I think that is the principle that is important, that we are accessible. Uh, we're not remote. We are both operative surgeons in the trenches. So if I don't call somebody back, I'm doing a free microvascular transfer. If you, if you don't call somebody back right away, I know you're doing an APR uh, or an endoscopy of some sort because that's who you are and that's who we are. And I think that that is uh, something we're both proud of, of our surgical credibility within our fields. Um, and we identify not only with academic surgeons, military surgeons, our rural surgery colleagues are, are an important part of the surgical workforce. Many, if not all, in their communities are the unsung heroes that the college is now centering on their voice, their needs, their circumstances. And so, you know, to serve all with high standards and fidelity, they're doing it every day and, and we want to embrace them. Thanks very much, Scott. I'm, I'm looking forward again to working side by side with your inspirational leadership during the coming year. Team, together, everyone achieves more. We're together.